Quilting Simple Brick Quilt Piecing simple strips together is a great way for a beginner to get into patchwork. Here is a list of the equipment you'll need. You'll also find this in the description box below. Cut the jelly roll strips into a variety of random lengths between 2 and 10 inches or 5 and 25 centimeters long, with most pieces about 5 inches or 12 centimeters long. Use the quilter's ruler to make sure you cut them with straight, square edges. You can lay several strips on top of each other and cut them all at the same time. With right sides together, pair each fabric strip with a strip of a different length and pattern. Align the short edges and pin together. When each piece has been paired, chain piece them together. Place the pairs of strips to be joined right sides together, then feed them through the machine in sequence without lifting the presser foot or breaking the thread. You will have a chain of units with a short length of thread between each. Using scissors, cut the paired pieces apart by snipping through the short length of thread between them. With right sides together and aligning the short edges, sew each paired piece to another paired piece. Make sure that the same fabrics are not next to each other. Join all the paired pieces to form one long strip. Press the strip. Using the measuring tape, cut the long strip into 49 inch or 125 centimeter lengths. You should have about 30 strips, depending on the amount of fabric taken up by the seams. Lay the strips on a large, flat surface and arrange them in a pleasing order in rows. Plan the layout of your pieces to make a quilt top that will be roughly 49 by 57 inches or 125 by 145 centimeters. Make sure the same fabrics are not placed next to one another. When you are happy with the arrangement, turn each strip over and press the seams of each strip in the same direction. Working from one edge of your arrangement and with right sides together, pin the first two strips together along their length. Sew them, leaving a quarter inch or six millimeter seam allowance. Join five strips together in this way, then repeat until you have about six pieces, each consisting of five joined strips. Your final number of pieces will depend on the number of strips you started with. Join one piece to another, right sides facing, and sew them together. Repeat until all six pieces are joined. Turn the quilt over and press the seams open. The quilt top is now complete. Lay the backing fabric wrong side up on a large, clean, flat surface with batting or wadding on top. Smooth out the two to make sure they are not bunched or folded, then lay the quilt top on the batting. The batting and backing fabric will both extend slightly beyond the edges of the quilt top. Starting from the center and working outward, pin all three layers together using safety pins. Make sure that all the layers lie flat and check that the underside of the backing fabric also lies flat. Quilt in the ditch along every sixth strip. Quilting in the ditch. The sewing follows the piecing lines in the quilt top and is hidden in the seams. Use a walking foot on your machine. Roll up the end of the quilt in the throat area of the sewing machine to keep it out of the way as you work. Remove any safety pins that get in the way as you work. Using the quilter's ruler and the rotary cutter, trim away the excess batting and backing fabric from the edges of the quilt, making sure the quilt is squared up. Create a 3 inch or 7.5 centimeter wide double fold binding strip from fabric and attach it using the double fold binding technique. Double fold binding. Cut strips of binding fabric six times the desired width of your finished binding, plus a quarter inch or six millimeters extra. Cut enough strips to fit around the perimeter of the quilt top, plus approximately 16 inches or 40 centimeters extra. Join them all together. Fold the strip in half, lengthways, wrong sides together, and press. Lay the doubled binding strip on the right side of the quilt raw edges to raw edges. Pin the binding strip in place along the first side, starting about halfway down the side and checking that none of the binding seams land on a corner. If they do, reposition the binding and pin again. Start machine sewing about 8 inches or 20 centimeters from the start of the binding using the seam allowance used in the calculation of the binding width. Sew along the raw edges, mitering the binding when you reach a corner, then pin and continue to sew the next side until all sides have the binding attached. Join the ends in your preferred method. Turn the folded edge of the binding to the back of the quilt, making sure to miter the corners on the back too. Neatly slip stitch the binding in place.